Hello, um, my name is Sasha and this is my best friend Irie. Say hello to the camera, Irie. And this is our story. So, Irie and I both have uh, uh, colon cancer. I was uh, diagnosed this spring with stage uh, 3B and he was uh, just diagnosed uh, yesterday and he's uh, stage 4 inoperable. The question is, how do the dog and I both get the same type of cancer. I moved to Oakdale in 2005 and uh, Irie came into my life just a couple years uh, later. I spent the last 12 years uh, living in um, Oakdale and Irie spent the last uh, seven living with me. What was the one common factor that Irie and I um, shared when we lived in Oakdale? We both drank water out of the tap. And uh, as you know, 3M um, buried uh, toxic waste in uh, Lake Elmo and in uh, Oakdale, actually about uh, three blocks from uh, uh, where we lived, and it uh, leaked into the groundwater. Hello, we are standing in front of the 3M reclamation area for Oakdale. My house is actually three blocks uh, up the street. So this is where uh, the part of the barrels uh, were buried, uh, starting uh, probably the, the 50s. Uh, they uh, were removed a few years ago, however, the ground is still contaminated. And so you're seeing this green fence, and the ground was just uh, being uh, reclamated. Um, currently, as you can see, it's still in uh, progress. According to all the reports, the cleanup was uh, completed in 2015. Uh, today is December 4th, 2017. Um, as you can see, the work uh, still continues and we still have poison in our ground. So you've been drinking this water for about 12 years from the chemicals that were dumped here. And you now have um, cancer. Um, tell us a bit about what you have going on and uh, what the chemicals here were and uh, how they brought joy and misery to your life. So I uh, was diagnosed uh, with uh, colon cancer, stage uh, uh, 3B. Uh water contaminating our uh, water. The safe rates are uh, one part per billion. We were drinking 23,700 parts uh, per billion. We have uh, the same stage of cancer. Um, there is uh, still uh, uh, hope for me after uh, extensive uh, surgery, but unfortunately uh, my little buddy is not uh, um, going to last very long. His uh, uh, tumor uh, stretches from right underneath the, the rib cage, and as you can see um, here, uh, a little bit on his butt, there's this uh, protrusion. So this is where the tumor uh, breached, and uh, the goal is to uh, keep him uh, comfortable and uh, make sure that his quality of life is uh, uh, okay until he's in too much pain. Now you're 35 years old, the cancer, colon cancer screening starts at 55 and doesn't focus on women. If they were a little bit more open-minded in who could get cancer, like a woman in her 30s, you wouldn't be as far as long as you are. So what do you think about starting screening at 55 versus 35 or maybe 30? Um, so I'm a firm believer in uh, early screening. Uh, my tumor has been uh, growing for years, so if... Uh, there was a screening, I wouldn't be in the situation that I'm in today. Okay. What about screening for younger people? I'm 35 and I uh, diagnosed with uh, stage 3B uh, colon cancer. My chances of survival are just 38% uh, post uh, high pack uh, a surgery and screening wasn't available, wasn't suggested by uh, my doctor. So what can we do to help young people? You know, um, the, the screening guidelines are, are made to catch as many as we can. In medicine, we're constantly trying to figure out the benefits versus the risk and what that ratio is. Thank you for sharing your personal story, and I, I really hope you're in that 30%. Um, we will take into account family history, um, your health habits. If you do have a family history of colon cancer, like uh, one of our survivors spoke to, um, it is usually recommended to get that screening done. I can't speak with complete accuracy, but I believe it's five years younger than the family um, member that she has. The first has. Paula. Yep, the first precancerous uh, lesion that was found on their colonoscopy. 
Um, some people have no family history of any sort of cancer and will still get this. That's unfortunately um, the science behind cancer. But um, that is one of the things when I was mentioning that insurance doesn't necessarily cover 100% of screenings. You would probably be in that category where we would have to fight um, a little bit stronger for you to get to get the screenings done. I'm sorry too for your solicitation. Pray for your recovery. Any other questions? Uh, but let me tell you a little bit about um, how I was diagnosed and uh, uh, what uh, my chances of survival are. Um, this spring, uh, a friend of mine and I went to France and we got a really bad uh, case of E. coli. She got better and uh, I didn't. Um, uh, multiple trips uh, to the doctor to check for anything from parasites uh, to bacterial infections all came back uh, uh, negative. The gastroenterologist couldn't figure out what was wrong with me who then uh, sent me to a colorectal surgeon who did an x-ray and um, thought he found an abscess in uh, uh, my colon which he then inserted uh, a drainage tube uh, to uh, drain, but I uh, kept getting worse. He pulled out uh, the drainage tube and uh, the pains uh, started getting uh, debilitating. I couldn't get up. Uh, the neighbor had uh, to come over and uh, let the doggy out so he wasn't uh, stuck in the house and getting his walks in. I uh, landed uh, in the, the hospital and I spent over a month in uh, the hospital with no uh, diagnosis. I just uh, kept getting worse and they kept uh, uh, giving me painkillers to uh, try to keep me quiet. Uh, oh. What's the pain feel like? Oh, it's like somebody is stabbing knives on the inside and then it starts spreading down and twisting my kneecaps. And then the muscle that goes right under here is throbbing. My entire leg spasms. And sometimes it goes numb, which is actually welcome. But most of the time it just spasms and throbs. And it feels like they're stabbing me uh, at the site of the new tube with a knife. And nobody is doing anything. Uh, finally, I uh, ended up with complete uh, blockage of the colon, and as they wheeled me into emergency surgery, <clears throat> my colon uh, burst and they lost me on the operating table. So it's a small miracle uh, that I'm still uh, here because I uh, died uh, that day. I woke up uh, the, the next day sporting a, a colostomy bag to a, a resident who uh, came in the room uh, with a look of big surprise and proceeded to tell me uh, that nobody in the hospital uh, expected me to live uh, through the night. The cancer diagnosis came a week uh, uh, later. I was diagnosed with stage 3B, which means one uh, lymph node uh, involvement. The surgery took out two tumors and uh, 21 centimeters of uh, my colon and part of my rectum. The bad part, the abscess was not an abscess, it was a tumor, so when they put in the uh, drainage tube, it caused the tumor to burst, so cancer cells uh, flooded my entire system. To make matters uh, worse, when my colon burst, the infection, the cancer, and uh, uh, my stool uh, flooded my uh, bloodstream, so pretty much uh, giving me cancer cells uh, in uh, all over my abdomen, so what is called the peritoneum. I had uh, peritoneum spread as well as uh, spread to uh, my uterine wall. The doctors uh, advised that uh, a full hysterectomy uh, might be needed at the time of uh, neck surgery, and uh, unfortunately I don't have any children, so that was the hardest part uh, for me to deal with uh, in terms of a diagnosis. It was the one time I sat down and I just cried because I always thought I had more time. And you always picture um, yourself, you know, sitting there on the couch reading uh, to your children and to their um, children. And uh, I don't get uh, that chance. Closest thing to um, a child that I have is 
my friend Ivory, and uh, he's not going to uh, make it very long. Now, the surgery that I have coming up in just a, a few short weeks is something called the uh, um, high back, again, due to the peritoneum uh, spread. Chemo is not very effective. My chance of recurrence uh, within two years is 100%, and they don't know if I'll make it through um, the next round of cancer. So I'm choosing high back, which is um, a hyperthermic uh, chemo, so it, it is exactly uh, what it sounds like. So they open uh, uh, you up and they pour chemo, chemo uh, inside your abdominal cavity at 104 degrees Fahrenheit for a period of uh, uh, 90 minutes. It is uh, very effective, so it uh, pre um, penetrates through the peritoneum, killing those uh, cancer cells, and it does uh, prevent uh, recurrence. Unfortunately, 11% uh, die on the operating table. Another 25 to 56 um, don't make it past uh, 60 days. And just 38% live post uh, five years. But hey, I'll take it. I, I'm 35, I have, I have some life to live. I'm refusing to accept that the diagnosis that I have, just two years left. What is the pain level when you wake up after this hot chemo? Uh, from what I hear, it's uh, it's excruciating. The recovery period is anywhere between uh, six weeks to uh, six months, and you wake up in the ICU. The average time spent in the ICU is between uh, six and thirty days. And you believe most of this came from drinking contaminated water that 3M dumped in your community and didn't disclose for decades. So you were drinking a cancer cancer causing substance for the last 11 or 12 years? Absolutely. I have no family history of uh, cancer on uh, either side of the family. And think about it this way. What are the odds of me and the dog having the same stage of cancer? As I mentioned, I was diagnosed in the spring, so we started with uh, surgery and active chemo. But my little buddy didn't know how to tell me that he was sick. Um, so he went undiagnosed for all those months, so his cancer is a lot more advanced. So you tell me what the odds are of me and the dog being sick with the same thing at the same time. We know cancer is not contagious. How is that possible? The common denominator is the tap water. Okay, so let's go through what's going on with the dog here real quick. Why don't you point out the tumor to us? Okay, so this is Ivory. As, uh, as you can see, uh, there is a, a, a mass right here. So this is actually where the tumor uh, is uh, breaching right next to his rectum. And it starts right underneath uh, the rib cage. So it goes the entire length of his body, so about two feet. And Ivory is normally a very hyperactive dog. The idea of him laying around like this is uncommon, correct? Correct, correct. All right. Thank you very much.